Hey there Drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. I'm here today to do the first in a series of clips I'll be producing on how to help you turn your drone hobby into a drone business. And I know a lot of us have thought about it, and I know myself I've thought about it an awful lot. I love flying. I can't wait to get out on an afternoon or a weekend, get that drone up in the air and just fly till those batteries are dead. Wouldn't it be cool if I could do that and get paid for it, right? So it's a perfect combination for me of, of pleasure and payment, which is a great thing. And what's really prevented me from doing it up till now, and I haven't done any commercial photography up to this point, but I'm really anxious to get started. I've done a lot of freebie work, but nothing I've charged for, just so we're clear. But I've thought about it an awful lot, and the challenge for me with the previous process was I had to apply for a 333 exemption, which meant I had to fill out a lot of complicated paperwork, typically involve an attorney to make sure that it went through right and I submitted the right forms at the right time. And then even when the FAA sent me my golden ticket that said I could be a commercial drone pilot, I still had to hire a real pilot to fly that drone. So how do I feel as a drone operator who I feel have pretty good skills to hire some new guy to come in and fly my drone at a very expensive per hour rate. So for me, even going through that process and becoming commercially licensed meant I could only take really big jobs because I had to pay the drone pilot his fee plus the insurance and everything else involved. So financially it wasn't really beneficial to me unless I got to be really, really big. And that's a hard thing to do from going from nothing to a large commercial enterprise. It's a big step to take, a lot of investment. What's all changed though is with this part 107 that's coming out August 29th, it means anybody Anybody that flies a drone today can go take that test of 60 questions. You pass that test, you're able to fly commercially. They're going to do a background check on you and all that, but I'm sure it'll work out unless you're a bad guy. And if you are, don't fly your drones near my house. But if you're not a bad guy, which we aren't, um, you'll get approved and you're ready to go, which means you can fly commercially at that point. So your, your barrier to entry, your cost of entry is really low because you already own your drones, right? And the truth is... Um, there's so many opportunities that are going to come from this. And I was thinking through it the other day, um, and Part 107 really makes all of us professional drone operators from a commercial perspective once we pass that test. And again, I keep talking about opportunities. The market's going to be flooded with opportunities. At this point, I guarantee you that every real estate agent that's out there is either looking into getting somebody to take their pictures of the houses they're listing or they're looking to train somebody in-house to do that. Now, most of those real estate agents may be avoiding it today, but I guarantee you the minute one of the local real estate agents starts using drones to take pictures of the houses and footage of the houses, everybody's going to have to do it because anybody who's looking to sell a house is going to want to do the coolest agent available, and that's going to be the one with the drone photos. So their thought process already is, I don't know how to do this. Do we hire somebody or do we train somebody? And honestly, they may have in-house photographers. You know, and a Frank's the guy that goes around and takes all the pictures of the houses that go up in their listings. They may be thinking, well, why don't we just buy Frank a drone, get him licensed and let him fly the drone around? Well, you and I both know it's not that easy. It's not that simple, even though it makes it seem simple because they talk about GPS positioning and autocorrection for flight and everything else. I don't doubt that he can get the drone in the air, but getting that drone in the right position and having the talent and experience to actually put the drone where it needs to be to take that perfect picture or to put together that perfect footage is a difficult thing. Not to mention the technical acumen it takes to take that raw footage, put it into a, a program that they can actually do you know, corrections and do editing and things like that, like Premiere Pro or something, and deliver that to a client. That, that's a complicated process. And that's where you and I come in. So we can make that really simple for them. So what I want to do is approach a real estate agent, and I've talked to a few of them already, and they're really anxious to start doing business. Talk to that real estate agent and say, look, it's going to be way cheaper for me to do this on a job-by-job -job basis than to train somebody, buy the drone, take the responsibility of all that work, and, and you know, you're know you not going to end up ahead as financial. So for me, I think it's, it's an easy no-brainer for me to go there. I'm not going to get them all, but I get a lot of them. And I think the timing is perfect for you guys to do exactly the same thing. The beautiful part about this, too, is that kind of work is local. So where I live, within a 25-mile zone of my house or radius of my house, um, there's probably 50 real estate agents. And again, if I get two or three of them to play along and want to have us do the work for them, that would be great for me because I don't want to do this full time. I just want to do it when I have time for a little extra cash on the side. So and Plus, it would be fun. i got the sun. We'll go out there and we'll fly and make a few bucks. So what I want to stress is that you don't have to wait till August 29th to get started on this. A lot of people are thinking, okay, well, I'll pass my test. Then I'll start thinking about the business and I'll start lining up stuff. Don't do that because I guarantee you there are people today that are ready to go, that just have to pass that test. They're going to be calling the same real estate agents and commercial operations you're going to be calling saying, hey, I want to do some footage for you. You don't want to be the last guy to call because then it's going to turn into a price war. Well, he's charging me less than you're charging me. Why don't you do the work? Once you develop that relationship, you're going to be the guy they use. You want to be the first person through that door. So what I'm going to try to do with this series is give you um, a, a listing, a checklist, if you will, of steps you should go through to get this thing ready to rock and roll so that when you pass your test, and I have every confidence you will, on August 29th, you're ready to actually start go out there and fly commercially. So 
A couple things to think about. Start immediately. Don't wait. Start today. So tomorrow when you get up, put a checklist together and start checking stuff off that checklist. If you're serious about this, you have to make an effort every day to put yourself in a better position than you were the day before as far as the business goes. So simple things you can do out of the gate. When you think about how you're going to deliver your content to them, it's going to be done digitally. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're comfortable uploading files to some cloud storage space and delivering a, a link that they can actually get that information back. Now, if you're on YouTube already, you've already got that. Google provides you online storage capabilities in your Google Drive that you can set up folders in. You can drop content in there, and you can create a link for that and email it to a particular client. So practice doing that. Of the footage you take, even though you may keep it on your local computer, throw a small file up there and then generate a link for it. Email it to yourself to make sure that you can actually retrieve that information. You can see what they want. Another important thing is branding. Branding is super critical. You don't want to walk in there in a, a torn up old t-shirt and, and cutoffs, you know, with flip-flops on. You want to present yourself as professional, and the way you do that is come up with a branding scheme for your business. Again, these are all very inexpensive things for you to get set up, but they project that image of professionalism. So I would suggest you work on getting a logo set up. I'd work on getting business cards put together. I'd work on getting some letterhead put together. If you're going to send emails, I would work on getting some kind of signature set up in your email. So when you send an email, all the information they need to contact you is at the bottom of the email. Those all seem like daunting tasks. I'm here to tell you there are tons of websites that will do that for you for very little money. One of the ones I use a lot is a site called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. A lot of you may know it already, but if you look that up on Google, what that site does is it puts together independent contractors that are willing to do almost anything. They'll write you a jingle, they'll develop a logo, they'll put business cards together for a couple of bucks. They start Those gigs start at $5. I've had gigs on there where they've done business card design or letterhead design for $5. So it's a very, very minimal investment. Once you have your logo done, Print some business cards up right away. Don't wait. Get 500 or 1,000 business cards printed up. I like to use those everywhere I go. So even when I'm out in the afternoon at a park and I'm flying or I'm at the ocean flying, when I get a crowd of people around me, I'm handing business cards out like nuts because I want them that afternoon when they get home and settle into their homes to get on the computer and look up my YouTube channel or look up my website to look at the video I took that afternoon. And that's an exciting thing for them. And they'll tell everybody about, hey, we were at the beach and there was a drone flying and this guy took a picture of us. They love that kind of stuff. And the other thing it does as a hobbyist is I want to promote this hobby in the most positive form possible out there to the public. They're not going to be telling their friends about how annoying that drone was at the beach. They're going to be telling their friends about what a wonderful experience and I couldn't believe the pictures it took. And it's a positive thing. So that, that's good. But those business cards are going to be critical when you make contacts with real estate agents or any kind of commercial opportunity you've got. Again, if you go to a site like Fiverr, and there's a hundred of them out there, but if you go to a site like Fiverr, they'll design the business card for you. They'll deliver the files to you. You can email those files to an online print shop that will actually print and deliver those business cards in about a week at a very minimal cost. So do that. Um, another thing you want to do is have an email ready. So start thinking already about the kind of introductory email you want to send to a real estate agent or you want to send to a commercial operation to sort of whet their appetite about what you want to do for them. Um, and I'll put some examples. And again, I don't want to try and cram it all into one video. I'll do a series of these and I'll break each of these steps down uh, pretty discreetly in those individual videos to give you some practical applications of what I'm talking about. But, but the email concept is important because you're going to have the same email and you may find, like I said, there may be 20 or 25 realtors around my area. I'm going to send the same email to every one of them, and I may get responses on four or five. The others I won't. So I've got to have a primary email that I'm going to send first, a follow-up email. I'll start doing my homework already about who at the real estate agency is the manager of that office, maybe who does their photography and talk to them and see if they've already investigated drones or if they're looking to outsource that kind of stuff. All this stuff you can do in the next couple of weeks and be ready so when August 29th happens, you've already got handshake agreements with a couple of realtors in your area that are more than happy to have you shoot these videos for them. The other thing you might consider, and this is something that I'd like to do, uh, I like to do it right away, and I've been doing it for some time, is since you can't charge for stuff yet, and I've done no commercial uh, photography at all, is I would do them for free. Like I would say to realtors, look, I want to develop a relationship with you. I don't want this to be a one shot and done. So why don't I come out and let me do four or five houses before this thing becomes live on August 29th. I'll do them for free. I'll just come out, I'll shoot the houses, you pick them, I'll come out and film them. I'll deliver the files. You look at the quality of the stuff I'm putting together and you let me know if it needs changes. Maybe together we can figure out what you need specifically for your real estate agency and what kind of pricing makes sense to you. So you're you're developing a relation you're developing a relationship with that realtor that doesn't require them to think about maybe we should be doing this on our own. Because they don't they don't really want to buy a drone. They don't want to really deal with that. So if I can make it easy, they're going to come to me and we're going to work together on that. And that seems to be a pretty good uh, pattern for me to follow. The other thing you're going to need, because this is a really unique situation, any other job you may have, 
you need reference clients. So they'll say, okay, you're a, you're a carpenter, you want to build a porch. Well, let me call a couple of people you've built porches for before and see what your work is like. You don't really have any clients yet, right? So the way you present yourself to that realtor is you have to have some body of work already established. So how do you do that? If you're not charging for jobs, it's a chicken and egg thing. If you're not charging for jobs, you don't have any, any details to share with them, so what do you do? Well, what I'd suggest, and this is what I'm doing, is to have two types of folders set up, a residential folder and a commercial folder. But where do I get the content for that? Well, it's simple. The first thing I did was I made sure that I had my house cleaned up right after I cut the grass in the springtime, put a drone up, and started taking 150 pictures of my house from every angle, from the top, the bottom, the back, the sides, both corners from the driveway in. So I had hundreds of pictures, and then I sorted through those pictures and picked the best ones. I picked the best four or five pictures. They go to my residential folder. Well, that's one house. Well, I went to my neighbors and I said, hey, look, I got a drone. I want to take some pictures of your house. The only thing I'm asking is that you let me share those as examples when I go to these real estate agents. And I explain it. And I have not had one person come back and say, no, you can't share those. In other words, don't take those pictures. I don't want to have it. They're more than happy to have you take pictures of their home. And it's discreet. I'm not telling them where these people live and there's no uh, identifying information. So for me, it gives me a bunch of other houses that I can take. And when I'm driving around, if I find a house that looks really, really nice, I may ring the doorbell and hand them a business card. Again, get a business card. Hand them the business card and say, hey, I want to film your house and I'll send you the raw files. You can do whatever you want with them. Most people are thrilled to have those kind of photos, especially if their house is really nice looking. So you can build up a, a nice catalog of pictures, if you will, well in advance of you doing it for the real estate agent. If they say to you, well, what are these pictures going to look like? You can say, well, here's a link. Go look at them. You can look at any one you want and peruse through them. And you've got a bunch of examples there to show them. Commercial side's about as easy. So the commercial side, what I typically do is I'll go to local businesses. Like there's, I live in a community where there's a lot of horse farms and there's one main place that they go to buy their hay and their feed and all the stuff they need for their horses. I'll go there and take a picture of their location and I'll share it with them. And I'll actually print it out as an eight and a half by 11 picture and my little logo's in the bottom right hand corner. And I hand in the picture and say in a frame, because again, the frames are four or five bucks. I put it in a frame, I show up at the place and I go, look, I took these pictures of your establishment. There's no strings attached. These are just for you. You can put them up on the wall if you do. My logo's on there. I would appreciate that if you did. Here's a couple of business cards in case anybody asks. Here's a link to where I stored the digital versions of it. You're free to use those anytime you want on your website, wherever you want to use them for print ads, whatever. It's all free. It's on me. The only thing I ask is if somebody asks you who took these pictures, hand them one of my business cards. That does two things. It keeps them extremely happy. It develops a stream of future customers for me that walk in there and go, oh my gosh, what a beautiful picture. Who took this? Well, Rick took this picture. Here's his card. So I get clients based on that. But the other thing it does is it gives me pictures that I can use in my commercial folder. So I'll do that. I'll do fire companies. Fire companies love to have a shot of their firehouse with all their trucks out front shiny with all their people lined up next to them. That's a great picture to have. And again, it is a bit of community outreach because I'm doing it for them for free. They get some beautiful pictures they can use for their flyers, for their spaghetti dinner, or their website, or whatever they want to use. And I've gotten other people that have asked me about doing work for them once I can commercially film. So those are just some easy things you can do to do that. The last thing is insurance. I can't stress this enough, don't fly commercially without insurance. There are tons of companies out there that will sell you insurance that isn't that expensive. Do not put a drone up on job one without having some insurance on that drone. Um, you, it's not that expensive. I, I know I say that about a lot of stuff, but the cost of that drone causing problems for you versus what the insurance is going to cost you, it's a no-brainer. So look into that now. Don't wait till again, August 29th to start negotiating that stuff because all that's going to prevent you from getting started with this business. So these are phone calls you can make. There are forms you can fill in on the internet. And again, I'll go through this in detail in future clips. I'm just trying to get your blood pumping about this. I'm extremely excited about the opportunities that this Part 107 provides for drone hobbyists like myself. And the market, I think, will just explode. It'll explode exponentially as more and more people want these kind of photographs taken. And I've got a million ideas of where you can where you can do this and I'll share those in future videos. But for now, I want you to get up tomorrow morning, put yourself a list together and say, today I'm knocking off the logo. Tomorrow I'm knocking off the business cards. Wednesday I'm going to go out and film three houses. You have to get fired up about this. But all these things are great to think about. If you don't put that plan into action, none of this stuff's going to happen. So I'm hoping, I'm being a bit of a jerk here, but I'm trying to inspire you to get out there and actually start this as a real business because I think you're going to benefit from it. You get to fly your drones just like you do for hobby, but you leave that afternoon with a little bit of extra cash in your pocket, which is a great thing for everybody. So anyway, if you have any questions, obviously drop them below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. That really makes us feel good that we see subscribers growing. If you find value in this, we'll continue to do them. So um, 
leave me some comments, let me know what you think of the clips, and if you want me to expand on this, I will. I think there'll be five or six more clips, at least in this series, to go through some of the points that I've discussed at this really rapid pace, a little slower so we can go through step by step to get you set up. But I just want to close by saying we've been really excited about the response so far to a lot of our clips, but this one in particular, this series of clips, I think will really benefit you dramatically by paying attention to a lot of stuff we're talking about. And I won't be one of those snake oil salesmen that tries to sell you something at the end of it. This is all just outreach for me. I don't, I don't get a penny out of any of this stuff outside of maybe some, a couple of pennies here from YouTube if I get a ton of hits. But um, short of it is that I think that it's a great business to get into. We all drone as a, as a hobby already. And this could be something that you could do for a long time with very little effort and investment that could turn a pretty good coin for you. So hopefully, again, this has been helpful, and thanks an awful lot for watching. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.